Okay. Now, let's discuss what I mean by objective measurements relating to schedule tracking. Great. The word objective is rather ambiguous to me in this context. A very real problem facing management is to always know where along on the schedule the program is. Therefore, if one has the ability to remove most, if not all, of the subjectivity in schedule adherence, one is way ahead of the game. Not only does it make it easier to report progress, but the personnel have more time in actually doing the job versus trying to figure out what progress they've made or not made. There is no judgment, only objective evidence. Objective measurements have as their basis objective planning of course. Each activity should have a start date, an end date, and a completion criteria defined for each activity. This seems rather obvious. However, the last piece, completion criteria, is very often missing. On a long duration program, say, more than a few months, major activities should be broken down into many smaller activities, that is, no smaller activity should be more than two weeks in duration. This is a pain to plan out, but, in doing planning in this manner, not only do you have many many minor milestones with which to track progress, you also will find planning errors. For example, you may find that a major activity has smaller activities within it that have results that are needed by someone else on the program. So, overall, the results of this level of planning can have beneficial impacts to the program as a whole. You get things done more when they are needed rather than when they would otherwise become available. These smaller activities could be almost anything meaningful to the effort. A few examples of this are an in-progress review, a preliminary design of a minor component, a peer review, a document submitted for review, the completion of a review, as I said, almost anything. Let's assume that a program is planned out the way I described. Now, assign a value of 1 to start an activity and a value of 2 to complete an activity. One only gets credit for starting and completing per the completion criteria. There is no subjectivity involved. Also, for the critical activities along the way, one can, and should, assign a multiplier to each activity. More on this in a moment. Let's look at how this works. Assume that the plan for the program has, on the average, 200 things that are supposed to happen every week. This would be a combination of things starting and things completing. So, let's say that one half are starts and one half are completions. That says that, without any multipliers, the planned score each week should be 300. 100 points for the half that started and 200 points for the half that completed. Got it? Wait a minute. Oh. I see. Yes, I have it so far. Okay. Now let's assume that for a given week only 85 actually start and all of the completions were met. In addition, 10 completions were accomplished this week that were held over from the week before due to their being late. Doing the math, this week's actual score is 305 versus the planned 300. This is good. But, last week's score was 280, that is, 10 completions were missed that week. So, what does this simple example tell us? Last week's score was 280, this week's score was 305, and the average score for the two weeks is 292.5. We are behind schedule, not by much, but we are behind. The key to using this type of method is trending. Or, how we are doing over the long haul. It is reasonable to assume that for some weeks the program is going to be behind schedule a bit, and for other weeks the program is going to be ahead a bit. As long as the trend is toward being on schedule, or ahead of schedule, all is fine. In using this approach it is important that management not focus on any given week, but on the trending. If the scores for a given effort, small or large, are trending toward being behind schedule for three weeks or more, the scores will point directly as to where to look to see what might be done to fix any issues. Nobody wants to be hounded on a weekly basis for a few points off schedule. Remember, it's the trending that counts. Does that make sense so far? Yes, it does. But, that seems like an awful lot of planning and tracking. As to the planning, yes it is. 
but the tracking becomes very easy. Each employee just fills in their status each week. They don't have to justify anything. They either started or they didn't, they either completed or they didn't. Okay. You mentioned something about multipliers. What is that? All right. Here goes. Take the same 300 score example from before. Let's say that of the 200 things to be accomplished, 10 starts and 10 completions were critical. So, multiply each of those activities planned scores by 10, as an example. As an aside, one can and should use a wide range of multiplier values. After all, some things are more critical than others. Again, doing the math, this new status value says that the planned score for that week is 570 versus the original 300. Taking the same basic status as before, and assuming that of the original 15 that didn't start, 10 of these were deemed critical, then the new score for this week would be 490. Before, the program scored 305, 5 points ahead of schedule, now this week's score is 80 points behind schedule. I know this sounds rather complicated. It's much easier to follow when you see it on paper. But, do you see how the application of multipliers can provide real focus on what is important? Yeah. You are right. It would be easier to understand it if it were on paper. But, I think I get it. By the way, how is this specific use of objective measurement of progress received by people? At first, both management and the personnel are wary. It is a change and people, in general, do not like change. After they've used it for a while, and see how easy it is on them, they come around. Customers love it, because it doesn't require a lot of explaining. The status is what it is, objectively. They feel, correctly, that they really have a handle on how things are going. On the troubled, program it is often the first time they have had such a level of confidence. I won't get into this now, but in programs where the customer is the federal government, they require many cumbersome reporting methods which this scheme makes much easier to administer. I think we are done for now. So, what will we cover next time? I think we should cover the real and central issue that causes problems in both programs and organizations alike. Okay? Sounds like the right thing to talk about. See you next time.